we're back on the record. Our uh, first witness up will be uh, Michael Prendergast, and after him will be Hope Singer. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chairman, honorable members of the board. My name is Michael Prendergast. I'm a partner with the, uh, with the law firm of Holland and Knight. I'm, I'm speaking today in opposition to the proposed amendments. Uh, one of the speakers uh, used a phrase, I've heard it used elsewhere, that uh, in a lot of ways, the amendments come across to the, uh, particularly the employer community, as, as a, really as a, a, a solution in search of a problem that, uh, that doesn't exist. Uh, as Member Hayes summarized in his dissent to the proposed regulations, most of the elections are taking place well within the ambitious goals set by the Office of the General Counsel. There are a few aberrations, but the amendments aren't addressed to the causes of those aberrations and uh, won't, won't address those situations, won't, will not expedite the commencement of bargaining, and will, in many cases where review is still allowed, will simply shift review to the time period after the election, and uh, we believe at great cost. It'll do so at the cost of, uh, we think, confusing the electorate leaving uh, potential supervisors in the unit. Uh, folks not sure exactly what unit they will be, be voting to join or, or not to join. Uh, this is particularly uh, problematic in the case of supervisors, where someone who may or may, may be a supervisor is left in the bargaining unit and puts an employer, an employer in a difficult position. Do they let that, uh, that potential supervisor uh, engage in campaign activities that uh, if they are found to be a supervisor, they would not otherwise be allowed to do. And uh, that could be potentially disruptive and we think could runs the risk of destroying the laboratory conditions that the board has fought so many years to uh, keep in the election process. Of course, most significantly, and, and what most speak speakers have addressed is that um, what uh, these members are, are really all about, and that is, is shortening the uh, pre-election period and the effect that that will have on limiting the free speech of, of employers and squelching the robust debate that uh, Congress sought to encourage through Section 8C of the Act. Employers, employees need to know the facts about the important decision of whether or not to select a collective bargaining representative. They need to know why they should even bother to vote. We still see frequently in our campaigns that employees are told by union organizers, look, if you don't want the union, just don't vote, but don't ruin it for everybody else, when in fact the true facts are that the majority of those voting control whether the union represents the entire bargaining unit. Unions, employees need to know about the unions trying to represent them. We see frequently unions will uh, brag about their outstanding pension plans and not bother to tell people that their pension plan had to file a, a notice of critical status with the Department of Labor. We, employees need to know what collective bargaining is and what collective bargaining is not. They need to know that it is not a guarantee of benefits. They need to know about the risk of strikes and the effect that that could have on them and their families. They need to know about union bylaws that could subject them to trial and fines if they try to cross a picket line. Unfortunately, experience shows that employees are not getting those facts from the union. And if they don't get those facts from the employers, they won't get them anywhere else. Uh, the amendments as written, we fear will go a long way to ensure that employees are voting in the dark on an issue uh, that may be one of the most important issues that ever face them in their working careers. Finally, I'd like to address the uh, issue of the Excelsior list. Uh, anyone with an email address today, pretty much anyone with an email address today knows how to operate Google. And, and if you don't, you could just ask your first or second grader and they'll show you. Uh, employees know how to share their email addresses with the unions, they won't do that. But what, what this will be is a further unwarranted intrusion on, on employees' privacy. Uh, organizing drives are often very, very emotional. And uh, a, a lot of times it includes supporters' personal attacks on employees who want to exercise their right to refrain from supporting a union. And absent violence or specific threats of violence, the, the board, this board is, no, is usually held that that conduct is not only allowed but protected. So employees have to put up with insults, name calling, rude behavior uh, on the job, in the break room, on their way to and from work. The uh, proposed amendments will, uh, will ensure that they'll also have to put up with that behavior as, as uh, unions spam their email accounts during the organizing drive. 
I thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Thank you for your comments. Um, my colleagues have any questions? I've got a question about your supervisor concern, which is really how do you see this as different? As I understand the current system, if there's a close question on a supervisor, request for review is often filed. If the board grants the request for review, we typically don't are unable to rule on that question before the election, and yet the election is not stayed. So you have that open question, the election goes on. If it's a close question, even after uh, certification, if there is certification, you may have a technical refusal to bargain <coughs> on the supervisor question, as you often did uh, in the nurse supervisor context. And so you have that uncertainty now. Uh, how do you see the, the, the proposal as differing in that respect? Well, the proposals now would, would put off any uh, disputes not involving 20% of the bargaining unit to, to after the election. Uh, we, we see that as, as uh, resulting in, in those issues more frequently being left to, towards after the election. If I could just follow that up with respect to uh, not so much when the decision is made, but when the record is made, if there are supervisory issues that are raised in a pre-election, in a pre-hearing, in a pre-election context, does 9C require that there be a hearing with respect to that if, if, if a party insists on a hearing? Uh, Member Hayes, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Of course, for however long it's been around, has required um, turning over employee home addresses. And how do you see email addresses being more of a problem? Um, I mean, it seems to me it's easier for me to delete an email than to turn away someone who's at my front door. So, curious your thoughts. We have uh, frequently in organizer drives. Uh, our, our employer clients are, are faced with employees who are extremely irate about getting getting uh, mail, mail sent to their homes, and why why was my why was my name given to the union? We have to tell them that that was required required by the the board's procedures. Um, that's why we all have spam filters today because how irritating the email, unwanted emails are coming in, coming into our uh, coming into our uh, Workplace and a lot of times when when people get uh, when people have someone's email address, there's a lot of other things people can do with their email addresses, finding their social media sites, etc. And it's just, it's just a, a further intrusion on employees' privacy. If employees want to share their email addresses with the union, they know how to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and for being here today.